that we're to be good soldiers of Jesus Christ. The Christian life is not a picnic, it's a conflict. Amen. The Bible said we're to work together as God's united team. God's never called us to be independent, but God has called us to integrate, to come together, to do a good work for God. The Bible said we have to be careful not to harbor past bitterness or unforgiveness. Some folks are so bitter, it's sickening. The Bible said we're not to live in fear, but God has given to us love and power and a sound mind that you know who you belong to. And last week we talked about saying goodbye to the past and hello to the future. The Bible said if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All old things have passed away. All things become new. All you used to be as a believer is gone. Quit dragging it up. Amen. It's under the blood and you've been forgiven. You're a new person. And we need to understand from the very conception of the church, and may I say it's Christ's church, on the day of Pentecost, God has always intended that the church never be hindered, but the church is always moving forward. I'm reminded that Jesus was speaking to his disciples in Matthew 16. And Jesus asked them, Peter, whom do men say that I am? And Peter said, some think you John the Baptist, or some think you Elisha or Jeremiah. He said, but who do you say that I am? Who is Jesus to you? Jesus said, thou art the Christ, the Son of God. Amen, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Blessed are thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And then he said, I say unto thee, Peter, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And then he said, I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever that you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you bind in heaven shall be bound on the earth. When I prayed with Miss Sharon Thursday in the fellowship hall, when she prayed by faith, there was a binding of her faith in Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, bound in the fellowship hall, bound in heaven. Wherever you were saved at, and you trusted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. There was a binding. No man can unwind or unbind or tear loose what God has bound in heaven. It's settled in heaven and you belong to the Lord. See, that binding is about salvation. It's about soul winning. We've been called to a great commission. We forgot about the great commission. And I want to tell you something, the great commission is still great, and we ought to be doing it. So as we look together today and be reminded, as we looked in our scripture, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians 4. I want to just tell you what happened in 1 Corinthians 3. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, he deals with the building of the church. He talks about the foundation of the church. He said there's no other foundation that needs to be laid and that has already been laid. All these people today are trying to build a church on new and novel ideas. They're trying to build a church on some kind of new idea, some kind of new way, some kind of new message. The only way you ever build a church is you build it on the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody help me preach today. It was about the foundation in chapter 3. It was about the substance. We have to be careful what we build on. That it's not wood, hay, and stubble. That we build on gold, silver, and brass. We build on things that's going to be able to survive the judgment. The fire of Almighty God. Say amen. And then he talked about the reward of the builders. There's going to be a rewarding when we build on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he talked about the loss of a false foundation if you build your life on the sand when the storm comes it's going to wipe it away 
You've got to build your life on the rock, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so when we come to chapter 4, verse 1, it's going to be our focus today. The Apostle Paul said, let a man so account of us as of ministers of Christ and stewards of the mystery of God. You may be seated. Father, we pray in Jesus' name today, Lord God, that our ears will be open, that our focus, dear Lord God, will be on this time and this moment that we have together, Lord God, around your word. Father God, let us hear what the Holy Ghost has to say to the church. Help us, God, to understand the things, God, that you put in the heart upon the hands and the writings of the Apostle Paul, Lord, the inspiration of God. Help us, Lord God, that when we leave here today, that we'll not be the same. Change us, God. Form us and make us to be what you have destined us to be in Jesus' name. In the church, say amen. Paul said, let us man so account us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mystery of God. The Apostle Paul here gives us a solid description of the ministries of the Lord Jesus Christ. The word ministers here in the Greek is the word hyperteus, which is a Greek word which depicts the very lowest class of criminals. I told you all many times that we were saved today, but we were really a bunch of criminals. Y'all still with me? That we have all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. When I tell people in mixed company that, you know, we as believers are a bunch of criminals, they kind of, they get a little rubbed in the wrong direction. They a little kind of self-righteous thinking, well, I'm not a criminal. We all have broken God's law. Will you say amen? And it's amazing to me that God never calls the religious, the self-righteous, but God calls the lowly person. And that God calls those who are willing to suffer for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hypertius in the ancient times were the criminals assigned to live the rest of their lives in the bottom galley of a huge ship. I want you to just think about it for a few moments. They were the power and they were the engine that moved the ships through the seas. And sometimes the seas were calm and it was easy to do what they'd been called to do, their assigned place and position, but sometimes it was rough. Hey, you know, sometimes as you are doing what God's called you to do, sometimes it's just not very smooth. Can I get a witness today? Uh, sometime when you're trying to obey the Word of God, it seems like everything in the world is coming against you. It seems like you're fighting against the wind. It seems like you are in a, in a hard storm. And Paul knew how to describe the life of those who have committed their lives of serving Jesus Christ. He said there's going to be some good days and there are going to be some cloudy days and there are going to be some stormy days. Can I get a witness? So we see here these people who were called, they were servants, they were seated and chained to a bitch alongside other criminals. They shared the same common chains. They had a common oar and they worked the same number of days and hours. It's a perfect picture of of what the, the Christ said the church is to be. We're all to be one body. God has never called the church to be separated. Amen. But that we're one body, there are many members. There, there's one purpose, and that all should be participating. And one direction, all should be rowing in the same direction, doing the same things that we do for the glory of God. Equal labor, taking on the task that God has called us to. A, a group effort, not just a few people, but everybody seated where they ought to be seated. Everybody rowing as they ought to be rowing. Somebody say amen. They were, and may I say as they sat in the bottom of the ship rowing, they became inseparable from others on the bench rowing with them. Nothing should ever separate you from a brother or sister in the Lord. 
If the devil can divide the church, the devil wins. If we cannot love each other, how can we say that we even know God? We're to love each other, say amen. So we see here again, the Bible says, we know that we have passed from death into life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brethren abides, or the Bible means that remains in death. How many know you were born dead? Spiritually speaking, we were born into sin. And if you're not able to love the brethren, God said you're still dead because the love of God is not in you. If we have a problem loving one another, we've got a real problem with God. Amen. And yet you see people just cannot get along with other people. They don't like the other people. And for someone to say to hate somebody, I doubt the love of God abides in you. If you've got a hate problem, we've got to give it to God. Say amen now. See, the love of God lives in us. It's the fruits of the Holy Spirit. When we surrender to God's call and, and God gives us a vision and a purpose, God never calls us to fulfill that call alone. Amen. In the purpose and the vision of God call, He not only speaks to one person, but God also speaks to others. Would you say amen? God never called one person to do it all. God never called. Listen, God gave Moses Joshua. God always gives you somebody. God always gives you others that come along that you can fulfill your called purpose of God. Aboard those large ships, it was impossible for one servant, one hypertist to move the entire vessel. This church can't be what God wants it to be just because of one person. It takes everybody rowing. Amen. It takes everybody being in their appointed place and doing what God calls you for to do. To move an entire vessel, it requires strength and it requires commitment and effort. On, listen, on everyone's part. Many people working in unison, in unity, to move forward, to reach what God has put this church here to be is destiny. We are to commit to God. We are to work together. We are to look beyond each other, our shortcomings and, and our giftings and our lack of giftings. We are to grab hold of one another and, and help each other and, and encourage each other to keep moving for the glory of God. Today's church, we have too many called servants. They're moved from their appointed seat. Many seats, people may be seated in their seat, but they're not even rowing. They're just sitting. So I'm rowing out of rhythm. Let me just say this to you today. It's impossible for you to catch the vision of this church when we see you occasionally. See, what happens when you get on a boat of people going in a certain direction? You better know which way you're going or you're going to be confused. Amen. It'd be like somebody said, I'm going to sing along with you. And I hadn't even practiced the song. You're going to be completely out of rhythm. So God has called the church to be in rhythm, rowing, listen, rowing together. And see, some people are rowing like they want to row. Well, preacher, I, I'm saved and I'm going to row like I want to row. Let me tell you something. God didn't call you to row like you want to row. God calls you to get down in the bottom of his ship and get in your seat and grab that oar and row together with the body of Christ. What can I do or how could I get around if my body wanted to go this way but my foot wanted to go the other way? You know how crazy I would look? You know how crazy we would be today? If how foolish it would look today to be going in all different directions, and that is the picture of the local church today, never moving forward. Their ideas of rowing cause the church to go round and round and round. Have you ever gotten a boat with somebody who don't know how to row? I'm telling you, you put them this way, and they're pushing the other way. 
And there you are out in the middle of the lake looking like a fool going round and round. Round and round, never even getting to your location, the direction you need to be in. And what happens then is the church becomes a a maintenance church. That means we're just going to maintain, we're just going to sit here, and we're going to go round and round and round. And what we did uh, 10 years ago, we're going to do it today. Well, we're not going to do anything new. I tell you, hey, some churches, if you even dare to try to do something new, they're going to put you on the rail and run you off from the church because we never done it that way. And you wonder why they're stagnant and dead and not moving forward. Friend, you've got to work together to be a ministry. Some of y'all are sitting here today. You need to make up your mind what you're going to do. You really do. You need to make up your mind. I'm either going to go with God. I'm going to serve in this church. I'm going to be in what God called me to do. I'm going to get my oar. I'm going to get along with the rest of the church. And when they got their oar, and we're going to work together for the glory of God. And if you're saved, God's put an oar in your hand. God did not save us to sit around and stagnate. We must get a tight firm. And grip on our oars and row and row and row and move forward by faith. We can never be what God wants us to be unless we all are rowing in faith. If we lived in those days of these ships and these prisoners, these slaves, hyperteous people, ministers down in the ship working together, being the power and the energy to move that ship. They didn't have motors back in these biblical days. It took manpower. The church moves forward by the power of God that's inside of every born-again believer. If we live in those days and had the chance to peek down in the bottom of those slave ships, you would also see each prisoner was chained to a post near their seat. Church, there was a good reason for that heavy chain to be there. Because the work was so difficult and their destiny was sealed in the bottom of that ship, these men's minds would wonder of other more pleasant and restful places that they could be. That's the church today in a lot of ways. You know, we're thinking, well, Why do I need to come to church on a regular basis? Why do I need to tithe and these other people ain't tithing? Why do I need to come back on Wednesday night when nobody else is coming back on Wednesday? Listen, probably less than 1% of the people here today will be back Wednesday night. And it kind of makes the preacher think, well, well, evidently they don't want to hear me preaching or teaching. Or maybe the preacher, maybe it's time for him to go somewhere else. Because the people don't want to hear what the preacher is saying. All kind of things go through your mind now when these things are going on and you you love people and you wonder why don't they come to the church. It ain't the preacher. It's a relationship that you don't have right with God. Because we no longer desire to hear the word of God. We all think we got enough. We don't need no more. When you think you don't need no more, you're through. We need more of the Word of God. We need God's Word consistently. See, you let your mind wander. We peek out the window where we're supposed to be rowing to say, well, you know, it'd be a lot easier for me to go over here to this other church and just have a seat and just kind of get in the middle of the crowd and do nothing. When God has appointed you to a church and God has called you and anointed you to serve, And to get your oar and row regardless who is or who is not rowing. you got to keep on rowing. Y'all still with me? Say amen. Amen. Had the under rower not been chained to their post, they would attempt to escape and find a restful lifestyle somewhere else. I've seen it happen time and time and time again. Just about when God's about to do something, there's about to be a breakthrough and awakening in the church. Somebody said, well, you know what? I'm just going to take my toys and go over to another sandbox and play for just a little while. We got to be like Paul who said, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord. 
Paul said in Philemon, verse 1, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. See, we got to understand the prisoner, it denotes something. A person bound, a binding, a captive prisoner. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 7, 23 says, You are bought with a price, be not ye the servants of men. We got to understand that we ought to be like prisoners of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul counted himself as a slave. A, a servant, a do loss. He, he's been set free, but he'd rather be a slave of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he'd rather serve him than go on being the religious Pharisee he used to be. Never forget who you are, and never forget whose you are. We belong to the Lord. And never forget for who you're rowing for. Who are we rowing for? We're serving the Lord. Never forget your eternal destiny. Don't jump ship on Jesus. It's all about the Lord Jesus. How many of you know there are times in our service to God, it's not easy, and all kinds of assaults and challenges accompany us trying to be obedient to God. Sometimes it's just so hard. The church, there will be times when our flesh, come on now, tries to jump ship. And the natural man, the flesh, come on now, would love to be led somewhere else where faith is not required and commitment's not required and the crucifixion of the flesh is not necessary. Church, I'll tell you something. Serving the Lord Jesus Christ is not an easy task. Paul said as he writes to the church in Rome in Romans 6, 16, Know you not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or unto obedience unto righteousness. We got to yield ourselves. There has to be a yielding in our lifetime. Other words, we got to slow down. And we got to count the cost and we got to yield to the Lord, the calling and the commissioning of the Lord Jesus Christ to serve Him. Sometimes it's not easy. Paul said, No wonder that he come to the conclusion that I've crucified myself. I had to die to my own self. Many times Paul said things like this, what I want to do, I can't do what I so want to do. You know, I just don't do it. I have a, I, I'm caught in a, I, I, I have so much trouble. Paul said, I'm the chief of sinners. It's not easy serving the Lord at times. Paul said, I've crucified myself to Christ, but I'm living now. And the life that I live, I live not by my own self in the flesh, but by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. we got to make sure that we stay in love with the Lord Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Listen, when you began a work for the Lord, people get excited. I've seen it happen. And many are drawn to the work. But the, when the difficult time comes and it gets to be hard, it gets hard for people to stick to the call. And it gets hard for them to stick to the vision and to see it through to the end. Friend, when God calls you, he said we are to keep on keeping on. We are to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. That don't mean you're working to get saved, but because you've been saved, we're to keep on working for the Lord. Keep conceiving him. Paul knew that. Paul said, now I'm ready to be offered a time of my departures at hand. I fought a good fight. I finished my race, my course. I've kept the faith. Paul said, you know what? I didn't quit. I didn't jump ship on God. I just kept on serving him through much affliction. Paul never jumped ship. Paul said, I'm a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can vision him. I, I'm just like the man there, them under rowers in the bottom of the ship. I'm in my seat where God put me. I'm chained to a post, and I got my oar, and I'm rowing. And I'm not going to quit. I'm going to finish. I'm going to my eternal destiny. 
I think about the Lord Jesus Christ who said for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He didn't jump ship on what the Father had called him to do. Listen, church, if we're not fully committed to God's assignment and the task that God has called us to, we probably will not complete it. We're probably going to quit. We must chain ourselves like prisoners, the under rowers in the bottom of the ship, rowing for the master. And every one of us is very important. Everybody's important, amen, in the family of God. One of us jumps ship on God's call. The church stops moving. It stops ministering. Everybody is needed. Everybody is important in the family of God. Now, I'm sure there were times when those men in the bottom of the ship, uh, listen, a uh, hard rowing would say, why am I down here chained to this post or, or my hand rowing my entire life? No one appreciates me and no one ever says thank you. That's where a lot of people get into church today. They say, you know what? Like I had my little pity party this week. I said, you know, Lord, uh, evidently this church must be had enough of me. And my wife she stands all week prepare a lesson for adult people to come to church, to be taught the Word of God, for a preacher to prefer a message for the people of God to come to church, and you can't even get half your elders to come to church. I'm telling you now. So what's going on? And see, i got to be reminded, uh, you didn't call me. The church didn't call me. God called me. And see, i got to be reminded that I've been called by God. Uh, no matter where someone says thank you or no thank you, i got to keep rowing and rowing for the master. And you too, you too, you too. Don't you expect people to tell you thank you. you got to remember you're serving the Lord. You can get your reward now or you can get your reward later. We got some people to think that God owes them everything. And there's somebody to be recognized in the church. The only person that you recognize in the church is Jesus. You lift him up because you are serving him. You in the bottom of the ship. I'd have quit a long time ago if it was people telling you you thank you. We appreciate you, church. We appreciate you, pastor. I'm telling you something. It's amazing. You can help people. You can send a van to pick them up. You can take groceries to the house. And they'll just quit coming and not say nothing to you. You can go downtown to try to feed people. And right in the middle, you're trying to feed somebody. The devil's always there. You know what I said? I'm going to fix him a plate up one day. I'm going to put a whole box of x lax in his food. But you know what? I can't do that. You know why I can't do that? Because, see, friend, I'm chained to my oar. And I ain't going to quit rowing. I'm going to keep on rowing for the master. Because, see, you've got to handcuff yourself to what God's called you to do. You've got to lock yourself in. Don't let nobody take your oar from you. Keep on rowing. And keep on rowing. You've got to lock yourself in. Paul was handcuffed by the Holy Ghost of God. But we got all these preachers saying, I had a preacher tell me one time, Brother Rick, I'm going to keep on preaching until I get 50. And then I'm going to retire. I said, are you sure God called you? How can you quit on God? Come on, friend. we got too many people who's trying to take their hands off of the oar. They just want to ride free. They don't want to row. They don't want to row and move forward to the glory of God. Y'all still with me? Say amen. amen. We've got to keep on rowing. And the truth is, it doesn't matter whether or not people appreciate you for what you do. If the boat's going to move, you must keep on rowing the boat. Just keep on rowing the boat. Don't worry about what people see you do or don't see you do. You just keep on rowing the boat. Hallelujah. This is the hard reality of those who are committed to serving the Lord Jesus Christ. And let me say this to you. 
Are y'all still with me? Say amen. amen. Never allow a lack of appreciation to cause you to jump ship on the Lord Jesus Christ and start serving. Don't you quit because people don't appreciate you. You just keep moving forward to the glory of God. Y'all with me? Say amen. Paul said in Galatians 1.1, 1, 1, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. See, Paul had to tell the people there in the church, the people who were being saved who knew about Paul, probably even the same people he had arrested, maybe people he even offended, that you didn't call me. You know what? Some kind of uh, Jerusalem castle didn't call me. Jesus called me. God the Father called me who raised Jesus from the dead. See, we have some people who are church called. We got some people want to be a part of the church. We got some people that's happened in this, in this church through the years. We got some people who join the church because it's a good place to have a funeral. I'm telling you the truth now. You may not realize it at the beginning, but when you look back, you see the only reason they came is because we got plenty of room here to have a nice funeral. You okay? Say amen. Take a breath. See, we got to understand here. You got to lock it in. You got to get locked in with your oar and don't let nobody take the keys and unlock you. From serving the Lord. That word there, apostle, it's apollos, means to send away. It means you've been commissioned, you've been dispatched with authority and power. You've been sent as a personal represent, representative of a powerful government. See, we, we have a, a kingdom. We, we serve the kingdom of God. We are of a royal priesthood, and we're going to serve him. So church like Paul, when we say yes to Jesus and we surrender to him very happily, you've got to pick up your oar and row for the captain of your salvation. Why do we do what we do? Why do we do what we do? If it's not for the Lord Jesus, it's all in vain. Let me ask you to stay on your feet right quick with me. Stand up, come on now. Lock the back doors. Come on for just a minute. Any born-again believer today, you know God called you. All these people say, well, I ran into God at the ball field. I ran into God on the way from the club. I remember years ago coming back from Miami, Florida, working with a crew. We picked up a guy side of the road, and he said, I found Jesus in the bottom of a beer can. I didn't have enough sense to tell man, you must be crazy. What's Jesus doing in the bottom of a beer can? And to start with, he said, he found Jesus. Let me tell you something. When God found you, you were in a lowly pit. We were down and going down, and without him, there was no hope. And God reached down and picked you up out of a horrible pit. And God has set you on a rock. And church, let me say something to you. From this day on, I want to challenge you. Maybe get your place in the altar here and get your oar and put your hands around it. And don't you let nobody take it from you. Don't you let people disappoint you so that you're going to quit on God. We've had so many quitters here, it's unbelievable. We got people who left the church, don't even go to church. When God has called you and the Holy Ghost has arrested you and handcuffed you to your oar, you can't leave God if you wanted to. You may get discouraged. You may want to throw in a towel. You want to say, Lord, what's going on? What do I need to do? But you cannot. And what God would do every time, he does it to me every time. He takes me back to that little white chapel on the prison compound in Columbia where God touched me and God called me to be his and he handcuffed me with the Holy Ghost.
The Bible said he has sealed us until the day of redemption. He said, I've given you a key, a key to the kingdom. Not a key to take the chains off your hands, but a key to open doors for people to be saved. If everybody here today will come get your oar and start rowing, and quit looking at the person beside you rowing. You just row, and you just keep on rowing. And if you'll come do that today, from now on, you can walk around, and this can be your song, and this can be your motto. Row, row, row your boat. What you doing down there praying? I'm rowing my boat. Why you go out on church on Thursday and labor? I'm just row and rowing. I'm just rowing my boat. Why do you have confidence that God is not through with you yet? I'm just going to keep on rowing my boat. Some of you are sick today. You just keep on rowing your boat. You just keep on rowing your boat. I can't row for you. You can't row for me. You've got to keep rowing and keep rowing for the glory of God and keep rowing the boat. Father, we love you. We praise you. God, this is you. God, you are our Savior. God, you are our hope. You are our confidence, God. You are all in all, Lord God. You have given us Jesus Christ, the captain of our salvation. And we're going to row for Jesus. We're going to keep on rowing for Jesus. Why are we going to row for Jesus? Because Jesus said, I'm the way. I'm the truth and I'm the life. And no man cometh to the Father except by me. When you want to quit, you just keep on rowing. Father, we bless you. May saved people come today and get their oar back in their hands. May they lock it on their wrist, God. I just pray, Lord, if there's someone here today not saved, they will come today. Maybe somebody's here today and you want to commit to the service of this church and say, I've come here. God has led me here. I want to serve here. I want to put my oar in the boat and in the water, and I want to row with this church. You come as the Lord leads you. I'm through preaching now. You come, come quickly. I can't row for you. But I can row with you. You come quickly. Bring your oar. Come get it. They pass me by. I can see it in their eyes. Empty people. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Just ride or you gonna row? What you gonna do today? Turn it around today, church.